Hello guys, you are welcome to Chris Control Automation once again. I really thank you all for waiting patiently for me to come back again to continue this great work. In this video, we are going to look at this complete wiring for a project that a subscriber brought to me. This video is sponsored by Zheneng Electronic Technology Company Limited, Fusal Measuring Instrument, China. Zheneng Electronic Technology Company Limited is a professional manufacturer engaged in the production and wholesale of all types of electronic measuring instruments. Their measuring instruments are used in a large number of industries such as power generation, power transmission, power distribution, petrochemical industries, mining industries, food and beverages industries, water production industries, pharmaceutical industries, and a whole lot. These are some of their instruments. We have FR17C series digital multimeter fr90 multifunctional non-contact induction test pen fr5000 series high precision current recorder we have fr205 digital clamp multimeter fr1000 high or low voltage clamp current tester fr2000 plus series clamp at resistance tester fr2050 series flexible clamp power tester we also have es3070 portable dc resistance tester es3072 dc resistance tester es3080 three channel dc resistance tester we also have es3030 digital large ground network tester es3035 plus series digital insulation resistance tester ES3050 Digital DC Resistance Tester. Then we have FR3015 Series Digital Insulation Resistance Tester. Then we have FR3025 Series Digital Insulation Resistance Tester. We have so many types of them. I only mentioned a few, okay? Let's look at something here. I use the FR17C Digital Multimeter to test for the single phase supply voltage duty cycle of the supply voltage and then frequency of the supply voltage and i also use the non-contact induction test pen to test for non-contact voltage so let's look at the ac supply voltage we have 253 point something volts the duty cycle we have 44 point something percent or 46 percent the frequency we have 50 or 51 hertz then let's look at the non-contact voltage testing I am checking for the presence of voltage in the line without touching or making any physical contact with the cable Zheneng Electronic Technology Company Limited Fusal Measuring Instrument they are located at 4F Number 771, Guangkong 8 Road, Zhongluotan, Beiyun District, Guangzhou, China. In case you want to reach out to them to make any purchase or bulk purchase or for any inquiries, then this is their telephone number plus 0086 020 Their mobile number is plus 86153740 Their email address is sales6 at fusar.com Zheneng Electronic Technology Company Limited Fusar Measuring Instrument They are saying that let their word use good meters It is a three pump control So this is pump one, pump two and then pump three Okay Pump 1, pump 2, and then pump 3. Pump 1 is 25 horsepower. Pump 2 is 5 horsepower. Pump 3 is 15 horsepower. So the project says that always two pumps should be running whilst one pump is on standby. So always pump 1 should be started. And any one of these should also be started. So when pump 1 is started, we can start pump 2 and leave pump 3. Or when we start pump 1, we can start pump 3 and leave pump 2 in that order. Okay. 
I am reading the question. Three pumps are used to run water pumps at Martin Jeffrey Waterworks. The pumps are rated 25 horsepower, 5 horsepower, and 15 horsepower. So it means that, as I said earlier, this is 25 horsepower, 5 horsepower, and then 15 horsepower. A siren should sound for 10 seconds before the motors can be started manually. So it means that when you want to start the motor, this siren should sound for 10 seconds before we can energize these pumps. Until the siren stops, we can't energize any of these pumps. The circuit is interlocked so that only two motors should run at a given time with the 25 horsepower starting first. It is saying that the circuit is interlocked. So assuming we start the 25 horsepower and then we energize motor 2 or 5 horsepower Okay, it means that we can't energize this motor 3. That is the meaning of interlock. Or when we start motor 1 and then we start motor 3, we can't energize motor 2 because they are interlocked. Motor 2 and motor 3, they are interlocked. When this one starts, this one can start. When this one also starts, this one can never start. Okay, so that is the meaning of interlock. If the operator attempts to start the third motor, that was on rest. A siren should sound twice in two second interval and stop automatically. Assuming we are running pump one or motor one and motor two, and the operator comes and press on motor three start button, this siren should sound for two seconds interval. Okay? Or when we are running motor one and motor three, and the operator comes and press on motor two. The siren should sound for two seconds intervals and stops. So we are going to do the demonstration. What the question is saying, we are going to operate them one after the other. Okay? All contactors are supplied at 380 volt coils. He's saying that the contactor coils are to be supplied with 380 volt coils, but I use single phase 220. But when we are doing the real practicals in the factory or in the industry, Make sure you supply the coils in accordance with what the question is telling you. When any motor trips on overload, the whole operation should stop and a siren should sound while a lamp shows a tripped motor. Use only one siren in your circuit. So it is saying that assuming the two pumps are working and any of these pumps, okay, their overload trips, the whole pump should go off. A siren should sound while a lamp is also on to indicate the tripped motor, okay? But in my circuits, I didn't use the lamp because the wiring is many, okay? So I ignored the lamp part just by connecting the lamp on each motor or on each contactor, the red lamp, okay? Or yellow lamp, it should be yellow lamp. But I didn't connect those yellow lamps, okay? Yeah, so we are going to print the circuit. So we are going to switch on this letter switch. See that? When I press it, it can't energize. Until it stops. Now that it has stopped, I can energize the contactors or the motors. Okay? So always the 25 horsepower should energize first. So let's see the contactor one. This contactor. See that it is energized. Now I can energize any of these two, any one, in addition to this. So let's assume that I would energize motor two. You see that? So motor one and motor two, or pump one and pump two, they are energized now. So I want to try and energize pump three, which is on rest, which is on standby. Let me see what will happen. When I press it, there's this siren sound. You see that? And the contactor couldn't energize. You see that? Unless I de-energize one contactor. So let me de-energize this. Okay, and then I'll energize this contactor. You see that? It is energized. 
Now let me try and press on this and see. You see that? So now Mutu 1 and Mutu 3, they are running. When I press Mutu 2, the siren sounded, indicating that Mutu 1 and Mutu 3 are already running. Now that Mutu 1 and Mutu 3 are running, I want to try, okay, and trip this overload, Mutu 1 overload. Let's see whether the siren will also come on again. So I'll open this side and then I'll push the red button inside here. You see that? So all the motors or the contactors, they are all off. And then the siren is on. Okay. So when I reset it, when I reset it, okay, it will take 10 seconds and then the siren will go off. Let's see. You see that? As I reset it, it took 10 seconds, then it went off. So now I can energize the motors again. In this case, I will energize motor 2 again. So now motor 1 and motor 2, they are running. I use these switches as overload because I only have one thermal overload here. So I use the normal closed section, the normal closed section, okay? So when I turn it, this contactor will de-energize. It means that the overload has stripped. So let me see what will happen. You see that? They are all gone off. So when I reset it by bringing it backwards or turning it, okay, it will take 10 seconds and then the siren will go off. You see that? So when the motor trips, okay, the siren will be on for a very long time until the operator comes and then reset it. Okay? If not, the siren will be on until the operator comes and reset it. So after you press the reset button, it will take 10 seconds and then it will go off by itself so that you can restart the system again okay so now i'm going to start motor one and then i'll start motor three so one and three they are running now i'm going to trip the overload okay by turning the switch i told you earlier that i use this switch as an overload but when you are doing the wiring you should make sure you use three overloads for each pump real overload like this one okay so I am tripping it. You see that? I can't energize them. I can't energize them. Okay. And then the siren will be on for so many hours until I reset it. Okay. So I am resetting it. Now it will take 10 seconds and then it will go off. You see that? So now we can start any of the motors. So engineers, this is the practical wiring of the question that the subscriber brought to me, okay? So the diagram is there. If you are interested in the diagram, kindly give me a message in the comment section, all right? And then I'll forward the diagram to you. If this is the first time you're watching this channel, then I'll urge you that you subscribe to this channel. And then you hit on the bell icon, you select all to receive my videos always. And then if you like the video, you put down your comments and then you share the video to your friends. So let's meet in the next video. Thank you.